This video is brought to you by Harold Sack, who gave me a massive one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon. We're finally seeing a new Riku card, and this one is Modal Spell Tribal, giving us multiple effects depending on how many modes we can activate with Riku in play. And we don't have the dreaded once a turn clause on this one either, meaning it might actually be good. So let's get into the modal spell straight away here, and I'll try and break them down into categories as near enough every spell is modal in this list. So for removal we've got a braid which can get rid of a small creature or an artifact, hull breach is artifacts and enchantments, flame of anore is a really good piece printed recently, especially because our commander is a wizard, so we get to choose two modes between draw two cards, destroy an artifact, or five damage to a creature, likely removing it. Primal Command is one I used to run a lot more before the format speeded up so much. I'd use this one back in the day to tuck an opponent's commander and shuffle back when you could actually do that, but tutoring out a creature can be useful here too. We can also choose two modes with this one, and the more modes we get the better in this deck. Continuing the interaction we've got some counter spells available to us as well. Is it Charm can be a narrow negate, a shock, or a loot effect to dig us further down for some card filtering. Archmage's Charm can steal soul rings and skull clamps, Draw two, or counter a spell, so it's good to hold up until the end step before your turn if needs be. Confounding Conundrum is a counter spell or card advantage as well. Then Quandrix Command can give us two modes. Bounce a creature or a planeswalker, which can come in handy in a pinch. Counter an artifact or enchantment. Shuffle some cards back into the deck. Or buff a creature, which can help make our commander more of a threat with regards to commander damage if we just focus on one player. It is noteworthy that we have a Power Matters card in here as well, but we'll go over that later. Team of Charm allows us to fight a creature out of the way, counter a spell, or keep weenies from blocking, which is useful for when we use our overrun effects later in the game. Cryptic Command is similar in that it can tap an army down, cantrip on a counter, or bounce an expensive permanent wasting an opponent's turn recasting it. Mystic Confluence are often used to just draw three cards when I don't need the counter, but it can bounce a creature as well. Three modes on this one maximises the triggers on Riku. The same is true of Sublime Epiphany. We can activate every mode on this one if we want to. Draw, two counter effects, bounce, and make a token copy of a relevant creature we have in play. Speaking of which, there aren't many creatures, but let's have a look at some of them. I'll get the obvious ones out of the way first. Making chump blockers with our non-creature spell casts. Young Pyromancer, Third Path Iconoclast, Murmuring Mystic, and Talrand all make tokens. Whereas Sahili and Shark Typhoon are non-creature versions of the same effect, and should be more difficult for our opponents to deal with. Sahili could always turn a treasure into another gutter snipe for a turn 2, which will allow us to push more damage through. We do have some overrun effects for after we've bombarded the board with tokens, assuming that we don't need to chump block with too many of them. Crater Hoof is the classic go-to, and you see a pair of goblins not only gives us tokens, but can give a big plus 2 buff to power in the late game. And Return of the Wild Speaker is the card I referenced previously. It's here as a modal overrun effect, but typically I'd include this one for card draw. The issue being that our commander is a human, so the plus counters it adds to itself won't count towards this spell. We do have various means of buffing our other non-human creatures, but I'm not sure that will be so reliable to make Return of the Wild Speaker a consistent card draw spell as it usually is. Need to see how it performs during real life gameplay. Our opponents are going to want to wipe the board when we litter it with so many tokens and big creatures, so I've thrown in some protection alongside our counter magic which can come in handy. Smuggler's Surprise can protect our big creatures, as well as cheat creatures into play with surplus mana. Really eager to try this one, and see if it ends up replacing Heroic Intervention in most of my decks. And Simic Charm gives our stuff hexproof or can bounce a permanent. Speaking of board wipes, we've got a decent number of model cards here too so we'll have no trouble in triggering Riku. Brotherhood's End can take out small creatures or small rocks. We're in green so we don't have too much need for mana rocks, but could totally wreck some decks that are more reliant on them. Again, the Confluence Cycle is superb, giving us three modes in any combination, meaning we could deal direct damage to our opponents, three damage to all creatures, and or blow up some artifacts. A superb card even outside of modal tribal. Burn Down the House adds to our token sub-theme, but can also be used to take out the token army that's coming in towards us. Damage also goes on planeswalkers, likely taking those down too. And Cloth's Will can likely wipe the board of non-flying creatures, and or the best artifacts and enchantments. That's at instant speed too, so we'll be at a great advantage for when our turn begins. Before I go into card draw, I just want to shoehorn these cards into the tech, simply because I can't fit them anywhere else. If you look at the deck list, of the few creatures we have, a decent number of them are Shaman or Wizards. So Harmonic Prodigy is going to double up a lot of our triggers, 
making more tokens, drawing more cards, causing more damage, and adding more plus counters. Roaming Throne will likely choose either Shaman or Wizard depending on the board state, but it's likely going to be Wizard for our commander, so that we can make better use of the modal spells that only allow one mode. And Thousand Year Storm can make a lot of copies of our spells in the late game. This is where it's relevant that Riku doesn't trigger just once per turn. Plenty of chances for card advantage, tokens and buffs after just casting a small handful of spells. The dream would be to cast Mizix's Mastery with Thousand Year Storm in play so that we can go absolutely nuts on the stack. As for card draw, we've already mentioned the myriad of cantrip spells mainly attached to counter magic, but there are some others that are worth pointing out. Jessica's Will is both card advantage and a means of ramp if our commander's out, which will also get us double triggers with Riku, making it more likely that we can cast what we exile off the top, either with Jessica's Will or the Riku itself. And Drowning Dreams is a classic draw X card spell, but thanks to it also having a mill effect on the card, it will trigger Riku twice. Might as well get in some free mill to hinder our opponent's resources even further. Plenty of tokens being made, so I've included Skull Clamp, and in any Spellslinger strategy, Archmage Emeritus needs to be considered. Can be tricky to squeeze out time to get this into play, but if it can survive into at least one cantrip, then it's worth having in play. And the longer it stays in play, the better. Ramp time now, and we've got the usuals like Soul Ring, Nature's Law, and Cultivate, but Glimpse the Core is one of the rare rampant growths that's modal. So whilst it doesn't fix our colours, it is ramp that will trigger Riku, so it's worth an include, I think. Arc Druid's Charm is one of the best cards printed in green in years, and that's very high praise, because green's always getting good stuff. But this card does everything green wants to do, and does it all at instant speed. We can use it as instant speed ramp for any land, or as removal later on. An incredible card, and arguably goes in every green deck from now on, because it's just that good. Then Prismari Command is removal looting or ramp in the form of making a treasure and whilst i don't normally consider treasure tokens ramp especially when you just make one of them i do look forward to casting this late with the thousand year storm in play copying this a bunch and grabbing a boatload of treasure along with whatever other effects we decide on and sort of in the same category i wanted to include some means of land untapping so that we could have time to cast spells during our turn but also continue to hold up mana on our opponent's turn so we can mess with them. Seaborn Muse is much more fragile but untaps every turn, whereas Wilderness Reclamation only untaps on our end step, but is one of the hardest permanent types to remove. Anyway, I think that's about all I have to say about the deck. It's really just a case of getting Riku into play and being able to protect him long enough to get some value. Hope you look forward to the gameplay with these new commanders in the upcoming weeks, and thank you to the patrons for their long-standing support of the channel. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.